part two, the major sensory systems. It's common knowledge that we have five senses. We have vision, audition, a sense of touch or our tactile sensation. And we also have our sensations of taste and smell. But there are others as well. Most notable of these is, is our vestibular system. The vestibular system is responsible for our perception of our head's movement and its acceleration through space. This system is primarily responsible for our sense of balance. Sensory receptors are responsible for transducing environmental energy and information to neural energy and information. We can distinguish between three general classes of sensors based on the type of energy or information each responds to. Not only do these different classes of sensors respond to different classes of environmental energy, they also differ in terms of their proximity to the organism that is you. These three classes of human sensation are photosensation, mechanical sensation, and chemical sensation. The visual system is the single sensory system primarily dedicated to responding to electromagnetic energy, that is, to visible light. Visible light is electromagnetic radiation that traverses space-time at the speed of light, go figure, with wavelengths between about 400 to 700 nanometers. One nanometer corresponds to one billionth of a meter. The visual receptors, known as rods and cones, are located in the retina. The retina is located at the back of each eyeball. Most information from the retina is transmitted to a part of the brain known as the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGN, which is a part of the thalamus. This is often thought of, rather simplistically, as a relay station which just transmits information to the back part of the brain to an area known as the primary visual cortex. Our conscious awareness of the visual world depends on exactly which neurons in the primary visual cortex are stimulated by the specific spatiotemporal pattern of light, including the colour of this light, which is projected onto the retina. As we'll see in subsequent lectures, this is by no means the end of the story. The visual system is capable of responding to sources of environmental information across a vast range of distances from the, from the observer, from the very close, just in front of the eyeball, or to even within the eyeball itself, which you might call floaters, the kinds of things we all experience when looking at a clear sky. We're also able to register light at vast distances, that is, to stars and to galaxies, such as the Andromeda galaxy, which is the most distant object that it's a, that's observable to the naked eye which is actually located 2.5 million light years away. Let's now turn our attention to the mechanical sensors. Mechanical sensation refers to the neural transduction of kinetic energy or physical movement. The three sensory systems primarily dedicated to the detection and identification of mechanical energy are the auditory, the tactile and the vestibular systems. Each of these sensory systems respond to movement. In the case of the auditory system, this movement is fluctuations in air pressure that occur as low as 50 hertz up to almost 80 kilohertz. The auditory receptors, known as hair cells or cilia, respond to particular vibration frequencies that are located in an organ known as the cochlea. Neural information from each cochlea is transmitted to lateral areas of the brain, known as the primary auditory cortex, via a complex cascade of synapses, including the medial geniculate nucleus. Exactly which neurons are stimulated along this pathway determines our experience of the auditory world, allowing us to locate where the sound is coming from, whom or what is making the sound, and interpreting the informational content of the sound, including speech and musical content. 
The tactile system responds to variations in pressure, heat, stretching and pain that occur on the surface of the skin, the body's largest organ. Information from these receptors is transmitted to the primary somatosensory cortex located near the top of the head via a cascade of synapses, often including the spinal cord. The other major sensory system that can be classed as predominantly mechanical is the vestibular system. As mentioned already, this system is responsible for detecting and identifying the direction and, and intensity of the head's acceleration. That is to say, it literally responds to changes in the head's movement, including changes in the angle of rotation when we turn our head, for example, as well as so-called linear changes in motion that don't incur any rotation, such as when we sit down or stand up. The final class of sensors we'll describe are the chemical sensors, gustation and olfaction, which govern our sense of taste and smell. These sensory systems are distinct from the other systems insofar as they involve us detecting, identifying, and even localizing environmental molecules that have actually entered our bodies. These are the most primitive of our sensory systems, with analogues to these systems shared not only by animals, but also plants and fungi.